Amen. Speak the name. There's no other name among below heaven and in heaven that a man shall be saved by the name of Jesus. This morning, we're going to take communion. And I always like to speak just for a second. It won't take but just a minute. So we understand exactly getting that frame of mind of what we're about to do. And I came across this devotion last night. And I'll go ahead and tell you, Will Graham wrote this. Will Graham is the grandson of Billy Graham. So I'm not going to take credit for his work. But he, just to save some time, he told a story of how he was saved, and it was by a communion service that he was in with his father. And he didn't quite exactly understand exactly what was going on, but later that day, this is me paraphrasing his story, his father sat him down and explained to him what communion was all about. And it was at that point in 1981 that he gave his life to Jesus. It was through communion that a soul was saved when you understand the true meaning of what this actually represents, it can change your life. <clears throat> that was his story, but the Lord's Supper is significant to all of us for multiple reasons. And it's found in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty six. Paul writes how the Lord's Supper is given to us by God himself, as it means to bring unity within the body of Christ. And moreover, when we observe the Lord's Supper, we recognize that the table looks in three different directions. It looks to the past, the present, and the future. In the past, the Lord's Supper refers to the, refers to the Passover meal that Jesus had with his disciples here on earth. At that time, Jesus took the bread and the cup, and he passed them around, signifying that his body would be broken, and the shedding of his blood would usher in the new covenant. There's a new covenant now that we have with him. Therefore, the Lord's Supper makes us remember that what Jesus did on the cross at that time, this is why he says, do this in remembrance of me. In both verses 24 and 25, Paul stressing that we are to always remember the atoning sacrifice that Jesus made upon the cross. We are to remember how he was flogged, beaten, and that he shed his blood to take away our sin. In the present, the Lord's Supper speaks to the present and how we have fellowship with him in a living Christ. We have communion with him because our sins are forgiven. We do not have to wait for heaven to have fellowship with God. We can commune with him right now. Not only do we have communion with God, but we have communion with other believers. This brings unity out of division which is exactly what was happening in, the, in Corinth when Paul wrote this letter. And in the future, we are continually to observe the Lord's Supper till he comes, as it says in verse 26. Therefore, this table also looks ahead to Christ's return. It reminds us that Jesus' victory, Jesus is victory, and that he will set up his kingdom here on earth. We are to proclaim the Lord's death, through the observance of the Lord's Supper until he comes again in the future. It also signifies the destruction of Satan when Jesus will, in victory, return. We won't be taking communion at that point. We will be at the banquet table and Satan will be defeated. The Lord's Supper keeps us focused on the cross. It draws us into fellowship with God and the body of Christ. It gives us the hope of the resurrection, the promise of victory over Satan and sin, and the truth of heaven. So the next time that we observe communion, or every time we observe communion here at church, take a moment to reflect the past, the present, and the future in God's incredible love and his faithfulness. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night which, in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you, as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this new covenant. Thank you for that blood that was shed on Calvary for our sins. Thank you for the promise that we know that you're going to come back for us one day and that you've never left us, you've never forsaken us. You are with us always. Thank you for protection. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. All right. And in that same spirit, if you have your tithes and your offering, we're going to bring it to this time and we'll say a quick prayer. Thank you, Father, for your many gifts, especially the greatest gift you've ever given us was the Son, Jesus Christ, and that we may have salvation. Lord, thank you for everything that you've given us. And Lord, just bless this offering as just a small token and repayment for what you've done for us. Before we know it, we can never pay you back. But Lord, this is just a token of thank you. Bless each one that gives. Bless the gift and the giver. Thank you in Jesus' name. Go ahead and bring your tithes. Teens and children, while we fellowship amongst each other, can be dismissed.